What's up guys, Scott Martin here, chilling on the shores of Lake Okeechobee. Hey, you know, we're in this video series, we're talking about spinner baits. And in the previous video, we talked about Colorado bladed spinner baits and when to use them. I fished them here on Lake Okeechobee. And at the end of this video, guys, click at the little box and we'll have that video up for you. So if you wanna learn about Colorado bladed spinner baits, be sure to watch the video at the end. But now we're moving on to willow leaf spinner baits. You know, I like a willow leaf spinner bait anytime I'm fishing around a lot of grass. A lot of times uh, I'll fish a willow leaf spinner bait in clear water. And I also like a willow leaf spinner bait when I'm just making long casts in covering water. Totally opposite from a Colorado blade spinner bait where I'm really tight to cover, making those accurate casts, again, like we discussed in the previous video. So follow me, guys. We're gonna run out here on Lake Okeechobee. We're gonna run back in the grass flats. I'm gonna show you all about willow leaf spinner baits. This could be a lot of fun. Hang on, let's make a little run, guys. All right, guys, this is a pretty nice little spot here. We're not too far from Clewiston. And uh, this is a beautiful place. You know, when you're picking spinner baits out, again, you walk in Bass Pro Shops and you look on the wall and there's just a million of them to choose from. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple for you guys. When I'm fishing clear water like we are here, back in the grass, it's all the same depth. It's all three, four, five foot deep. I'm gonna fish a white spinner bait with gold blades. Now here in Florida, the water's clear, but it's the dark color. You know, it's not crystal clear like Great Lakes crystal clear. It's it's that tannic color, kind of like tea colored water, but it's clear. And in that color water, I like a gold blade a lot. Uh, if I was fishing in real super clear water, like at Beaver Lake or the Great Lakes, I might throw a silver blade. Sometimes the silver, silver works better in that ultra clear water. You know, here on Lake Okeechobee, again, you got tons of grass. And the other thing is, it's all about the same depth. You know, we're in about three and a half, four foot of water right now and there's scattered grass and vegetation all around us. You see the visible grass here behind us, and obviously those are great places to catch a nice bass, but you can also get bit right out here in the middle. So as I'm making casts in and around these little cattail clumps, I also make some casts all out in the open water here. And again, that's why a willow leaf blade sometimes is, is really good. You can cover water a little quicker. You know, it comes through the grass. Uh, it's a little bit more weedless, I think, than a, say a Colorado blade. So a, Willow leaf blade when I'm in a lot of grass is, is really one of my first choices. Also, with a willow leaf blade, it's a little bit bigger blade. So in this clear water like this, these fish get to see that big willow leaf blade spinning through the water. And I think it imitates, you know, a golden shiner just a little bit better than having a small little just Colorado blade like we were in the previous video. Uh, it doesn't have as much profile. This longer blade gives a longer flash, which really imitates imitates a, you know, a shad or a shiner swimming by. You know, when do you throw a spinner bait? Here, here's the days you throw a spinner bait, days like today. Overcast skies, windy, that is a beautiful spinner bait day. A day you wouldn't throw a spinner bait would be a dead calm, bright and sunny day. I've seen it so many times where, you know, you go out on a lake, it's overcast conditions, it's windy, you have just a fantastic day with a spinner bait. And you go out a few days later and it's dead calm and sunny, pick a spinnerbait up, you're probably not gonna catch a whole lot. That's the time that you're gonna pick up a jig, you're gonna flip a little bit, maybe throw a crankbait, you know, do something different. But a spinnerbait on low light conditions and windy days like we have today is a fantastic lure to catch some nice fish. And you know, the other thing about a spinnerbait is it's real weedless. You know, it come, it'll come through bushes and trees pretty good but it really comes through the grass fantastic. You know, you take a spot like right there in front of us, we have a lot of lily pads, and a lot of people wouldn't think to throw a spinnerbait, maybe even over that. Check this out. I could throw the spinnerbait over top of that grass, and again, with this, with this P-line braid, that allows me to fish this bait through there really good, and if I get a big fish on, I'm probably not gonna lose them, but look at that spinnerbait. It just crawled right through those lily pads. Look at that. It never once got hung up, and that is really cool. There's a lot of times I'm reeling that spinnerbait through some thick cover like that, and a big old donkey bass will just come out of nowhere and blow that thing out of the water, and sometimes you'll catch your biggest fish. Again, that's two casts I've made in those thick lily pads with a spinnerbait and never once got hung up. You know, when I'm fishing a willow leaf spinnerbait, especially in a place like this, 
When I make a long cast out there, like I'm doing, rod position is real important. If I'm in a lot of grass, I keep my rod tip up a little bit. It's kind of the opposite of when I'm fishing, say, a Colorado blade spinnerbait. I might hold my rod tip down a little bit and kind of maneuver it around low. I keep my rod tip up a little bit because what I want to have happen is I want the angle, I want the angle of my line to stay at, a, say, about a 45 degree angle coming through the water. So it kind of parts that grass out of the way. It'll keep that spinnerbait a lot cleaner. The other really important tip is get very comfortable with the way your spinnerbait feels when it's perfectly clean, okay? When it's clean like that, and those blades are clean, the bait has a certain vibration that it's emitting. You can feel it in these rods. This is an Akuma 7.3 heavy action rod, very, very sensitive. I can feel those blades thumping. If I feel those blades stop thumping, and it's not a fish, obviously I've got some grass or debris on the hook or on the spinnerbait blade itself. Then I might give it a little twitch or a little pop to kind of keep that bait clean. The worst thing you could, oh, there's, oh, one just nailed it. The worst thing you can do is, is not know that and keep reeling your bait through the water column when it's got a big hunk of grass on it. One just smoked it right in that little pocket right in there. When you set the hook with a spinnerbait, you don't want to set the hook like you're fishing a jig or a worm. What I like to do is I give it a nice little pop, but I move a lot of rod and start reeling really fast. It's not like I'm going to set the hook like this. I'm basically just going to reel that bait along. I get a bite and I just sweep, I just kind of lean into them and, and really speed the reel up a lot. And just speeding the reel up like that allows that hook to kind of drive in. You don't want to drop your tip once you get one hooked. You want to keep everything going, let the rod, you know, fight the fish, keep him moving towards you. Don't get down low to the water and all this thick grass. Keep your rod up and get him out of there. That's real important. The worst thing you can do in a real grassy lake is drop your tip down and fight them low to the water. They're gonna wrap up and everything. You have a couple line choices to choose from when you're fishing a willow leaf spinnerbait and a lot of cover like this. A, you want good, tough line. I'm, I'm fishing again, this is 65 pound P-Line X braid. I can winch any size bass out of this grass with this setup right here. And then there's a lot of times I'll throw fluorocarbon. If I'm in a little bit more open water, I might throw, say, 17 pound fluorocarbon. It's a great size line for spinnerbait fishing. I'm not gonna fish it on 10 pound line because you're gonna end up breaking the fish off. You, 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 with a spinnerbait, the bait's moving through the water pretty quick. The bass aren't getting that good of a look at it anyways, so you can fish heavier line. And that's really gonna help you get these fish, again, out of the thick cover, and it's gonna help you drive that hook. Lake Okeechobee is such a beautiful lake. You know, you, I've traveled all over the country and get to see lots of fantastic fisheries, and, and I still say that Lake Okeechobee, by far, is the most beautiful fishery on the planet. There's not another Lake Okeechobee out there. It's just full of grass like this, the water's crystal clear, and there's tons of big fish. There's one right there, lots of good one too. See how I'm fighting him, I'm not dropping my rod tip, I'm keeping him up, keeping his head up. And again, with this bigger braid, bigger braid, I can get him out of there. Come on, baby, nice. He's covered up, not a real big one. Not the size that I lost a second ago. But, did you see how I fought that fish? I didn't drop down and lower my rod. Kept my rod tip up, again with this heavy braid. It'll, you can power those fish through that grass. Not a bad one there at all. Not a giant, but not a bad one. I think there's more in here. You know, this particular spinnerbait here has a willow leaf, and a Colorado blade. Now there's some spinnerbaits you can buy, like this one here, it's a War Eagle. And this one has double willow leaf. And that's a good choice. You know, it, it's, it's some days they like that. This bait here with the double willow leaf is gonna have a little bit more lift, meaning it's gonna keep, it's gonna stay a little higher in the water. It's gonna give off a lot more flash. So if there's bigger bait fish in the area, you know, like here on Lake Okeechobee, this would be a good double willow leaf are great. But there's bigger bait fish in the area, you want to throw a double willow leaf. If there's smaller bait fish in the area and you're fishing a lot of grass, again, you can fish a willow leaf with a Colorado blade. So let's give this one a shot for just a little bit. We're here on Okeechobee and there's tons of big, big sized baits here. 
Let's see what happens. Now I've got this rod rigged up on 17 pound P-line fluorocarbon. And that's a great type line when you get in a place. You know, back in there, I was real thick. I was still on the braid. You get in a place like this where you got a little bit more hydrilla, a little bit more open water, that monofilament could be, you know, could make the difference, really. Or fluorocarbon. Monofilament or fluorocarbon could make the difference. Notice how I'm giving this rod just a little twitch every once in a while. So as I'm reeling this bait along, steady retrieve, steady retrieve. Every once in a while, I'll give it a little snap. And what that does is it interrupts the spin of that blade just a little bit. These blades, as you're reeling along, are spinning consistently. You give it a little pop. I don't mean a lot of pops, just maybe, maybe two or three throughout the whole cast. That little hesitation, that little pop, changes the way that these blades are spinning, and it kind of shoots off a different sound, and it breaks that light up or that, that reflection off just a little bit. A lot of times, that's when those fish will bite it, when you, after, right after you give it that little, that little pause or that little pop, that little hesitation. You know, some people like putting a trailer hook on the back of a spinnerbait. And I'm not much of a fan of a trailer hook, especially down here at Lake Okeechobee. You've got so much vegetation that the trailer hook's gonna get wrapped up in the grass a little too much. So I just kind of take my chances with the regular, the regular hook that comes on the spinnerbait. But if you're fishing in really open water and those fish are short striking, you can attach a small spinnerbait trailer hook to the back of these spinnerbaits, and it will help you get a few extra bites. There's one, that's a good one right there. That's a good one. That's a good fish right there. Look at this one. Whoa, look at this bass, boys. Whoa, my goodness. That's a big one, dude. That is awesome. Woo, man. Just wrecked that spinnerbait. He was right there on that little point of grass. Oh, come here, baby. Yes. That is a good bass, guys. How about that? I, had, I missed a big one over in there and then caught a nice one here. Man, Okeechobee, spinner baits, didn't get any better than that, guys. So, hey, listen, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully, you learned a few things about spinner bait fishing the next time you're out. Make sure you pick the right kinds, fish it on the right rods. If you do all that, you may stumble into a couple of nice fish like that. So drop us a comment, subscribe to the channel. We got lots of other cool stuff coming on. And again, if you want to watch the tip on Colorado blades, be sure to click the little box at the end of this video. And I'll show you all about Colorado blades. And we caught some nice bass in that one too. That was awesome. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you. Dude, that was cool. That was cool. I, mean, I was like, boom, there he is. <laughs> that was awesome, man.